Hey there guys, it's Lee here. Welcome to another video. So, have you ever wondered what is the best graphics card for Ethereum mining? Well, that was something I was considering today. I was uh, thinking about, you know, potentially building a Ethereum rig, um, expanding on, you know, some of the things that I've got right now. And um, there was no clear definitive answers. There was lots of um, information back and forwards and I was uh, debating and deciding whether to you know go down one avenue or another what was uh, best overall so what I thought I'd do is um, I'd put together a little video um, showing all the uh, information that I sort of uh, found and kind of uh, put it together in a way that's uh, easy to understand and gives you a good overview and answers the question you know which which is the best uh, graphics card for Ethereum mining okay so there's three primary things that we need to consider uh, regarding our GPU a graphics card purchase. Um, so the three things that we need to consider is number one is the performance. Um, how fast is it going to hash and how how much work is it going to get done in a specific amount of time. So normally we measure that in mega hash per second. It's different for different cards but with um, Ethereum we measure it in a mega hash per second. Uh, the second part uh, in our equation is uh, power consumption and that's normally work measured in wattage how much power is the actual graphics card going to consume over a certain um, amount of time or what can then that will give us the uh, the running costs or the ongoing costs uh, for the actual machine itself and the uh, the third thing is the actual um, the initial expense the capital costs how much is it going to cost us to actually buy the graphics card and are we going to get a return um, over time so we need to consider these three things. So there is the uh, performance, the uh, the power consumption, and the cost. Okay, so let's jump into it. This is the first of my top three cards for Ethereum mining. So this is a bit of an old workhorse. Um, I've had quite a bit of experience with this card. It is the AMD HD7950. So this is a, a couple of generations old, but if you uh, can find them, and they are readily available, you're not going to have uh, too difficult, uh, too much difficulty finding them. They are readily available. They do give you some uh, great, great uh, options, and it's really good for people that are sort of maybe um, just dipping their toes into Ethereum mining or mining in general, and want something that's going to give them a bit of performance, but they don't want to um, commit massive amounts of money or use tons of electricity or anything like that. So this is kind of a, a good. Um, performance but an entry level kind of a cost and ongoing cost kind of a card so it kind of ticks most of the boxes for for most people so the first part is the performance of the card uh, the card will hash up to about 20 mega hash per second uh, on ethereum so that's pretty respectable um, even by modern day standards like i say this card is about two generations um, old but um i know for example my new nvidia gtx 970 only ma uh, manages to uh, produce um, around 18 mega hashes per second so you know it's faster than, than that card uh, on a comparative basis so performance wise it's pretty good it's a pretty solid card uh, the next part is the actual power consumption um, it does use a quite a bit of uh, power but it's not it's not extortionate it's not um, a huge amount but it will use up to about 200 watts and the other options that you could use you could underclock it or undervolt the card and it would use even less um, but you know for its time and its day it was actually a pretty um, uh, power hungry but efficient at the same time I know that doesn't really make much sense but there is you could do a lot worse for example if you you know if you compare it to like a 7970 or something that is a seriously power hungry card and that you know those when they're overclocked they'll, they'll go they'll use uh, over 300 watts so in comparison to those and um, the 7950 is a reasonable um, efficient card in terms of power consumption um, but one of the best parts of course is because that these are no longer made you probably won't find any new and I wouldn't really recommend that you buy any new um, but if you shop around on eBay um, Amazon or CEX computer exchange um, you'll find these uh, readily available and they are priced about a hundred pounds each so they're pretty good for a um, like I say more of like an entry-level um, system the only thing of that you need to consider of course is because if you are buying um, used parts some places don't offer uh, warranties 
Um, the card's been uh, used already, of course, and um, you don't know how hard it's been used as well. So that's something that you really need to uh, consider. Um, I've had mixed experiences with buying um, used parts. I've had some cards that have been great, and um, I've got, you know, a huge amount of life out of them and they've been really good um, other ones have failed in a relatively short period of time so what i would say is that if you do buy use um, try and get some kind of uh, warranty with it i know um, computer exchange does actually provide these with a warranty um, however um, if they find out that you're actually using them for um, you know intensive mining um, that warranty will most likely be invalidated so that's something to consider so just to go back to the, the uh, stats there, um, so this card will uh, use about 10 watts uh, per mega hash. So that's kind of a, a fair kind of benchmark. I'd say that's kind of, um, yeah, fairly reasonable. Um, the lower wattage per mega hash is really what you want to be looking for. Um, the next part is the actual mega hash per second per pound in cost, your, your capital outlay, and that is 0.2 mega hash. So for every single pound you spend, you get in 0.2 mega hash in performance. So that kind of wraps it up for the AMD HD7950. Um, you'll see in the actual uh, graphic itself, it's actually the XFX version. Um, I've actually used this particular graphics card um, previously in the days of you know script mining, Litecoin mining, um, and it worked really well. The XFX uh, card uh, runs cooler and quieter than a lot of the other 7950s. And um, so I'd always say probably opt for a single, uh, sorry, a double fan version rather than the uh, single like tumbler fan, like the, what they call the reference design, um, because uh, they run quieter and cooler. Um, so that's it for the 7950. Okay, so moving on to our next card. The next card is a great uh, mid-range card. So if you was uh, even using it for uh, gaming, um, it would be a good um, all-rounder. Not, not the highest of cards, but um, a good all-rounder. So the card is the R7 370 four gigabyte. The one that you want is the four gig. Do not buy the two gigabyte version. It will be a little bit cheaper, but the two gigabyte version will be out of date virtually um, as you buy it if you're using it for Ethereum mining. So you must get the four gigabyte version. Uh, with that warning uh, said, let's continue on. So the card is a good all round card. It's This is a card that if you want, you'd be interested in buying it if you was looking for long-term uh, mining, you wanted good efficiency, good performance. So once again, this card ticks uh, a lot of the boxes. So in terms of performance, it's gonna run at 15 mega hash per second which is not the fastest, but it's, um, it's reasonable. Um, so going onwards from there, the next part of where this card really sort of uh, performs really well is its efficiency. Um, for the performance, it uses um, very little power. Uh, the actual card itself uses 110 watts. So it's almost half the previous card, the 7950. Okay, so the card is priced at £140, which is a really good value for a new uh, card of this uh, this calibre. Um, because it is new, obviously you're going to be covered by the warranty and no one else is going to be used it. There's no um, hours on the card or anything like that. So £140 is, um, I think it's really good value. Uh, going back to the actual power consumption, uh, one of the things that this card really excels at for like a mid-range card for uh, Ethereum mining is that the actual power consumption is really low. So you're actually getting, or you're actually only using 7.33 watts per mega hash, which is really, um, really good uh, in comparison to the 7950 that was 10. So this is almost 25% um, uh, less. So, and also, um, the card itself, there is a little bit uh, of a performance per, for price uh, reduction. Um, so on the actual 7950, you was getting 0.2 mega hash per pound that you spent, bearing in mind it was a second hand card. Um, with this card, you're getting 0.1 mega hash per pound spent, which doesn't sound great, but it's um, a pretty good uh, card all around. So just to quickly summarize, the R7 370 four gigabyte is a really good um, card for Ethereum mining. In fact, I was actually 
this close to uh, buying um, quite a few of these today um, and I only sort of um, stopped at the very last minute um, just because I kind of cheaped out and went for the uh, you know the used option and got some 7950s but the 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 R7 370 of this card here is a good good card and um, I think I might actually buy some of these in the future um, to complement my existing um, setup so a really good all-round card you're going to get plenty of life out of it um, and it's also going to be you know resellable in the future so even if you bought this card used it for a year and um, you still be able to sell it in the future and get a fair portion of your money back whereas you know with the previous uh, card the 7950 um, that's going to have quite a few years on it uh, by that point um, so the resale value will be affected uh, this card is going to be you know practically new um, by the, even by the time you sell it or even if you decide not to sell it and run it for maybe two years um, if that's an option depending on how the uh, the ethereum network goes and when they change over to proof of stake um, but this card you know if if the the network stays as it is for the next two years this card will be perfect for that it's going to be give you a uh, good performance um, low uh, low power usage and overall the costs are also pretty low as well so a good all-round uh, card okay so we're now onto the final of the three cards which is the R9 Nano. This is a really powerful little card. It hashes at 30 mega hashes per second. It only uses 175 watts, but it costs a whopping 380 pounds. So it kind of like hits everything. So it's the, in terms of performance, it's the fastest of our three cards. It really does hash fast. It's also the most efficient card. It only uses 175 watts, but it's also the most expensive. It costs 380 pounds. That's more than double the previous card, which was the uh, the R7 370. It's twice as fast, but it's more than double the price. So just to have a look at the actual efficiencies of the card. So it uses 175 watts, which works out at 5.83 watts per mega hash. So it's the lowest and most efficient um, of the free cars that we've mentioned uh, today. However, it's also the most expensive as well. So in terms of the actual uh, price uh, mega hashes per pound, you're only getting 0.08 mega hashes per pound spent. So it's very expensive um, in terms of initial outlay. Um, this card, if you've got um, lots of extra cash and you want the very best in performance and efficiency, um, this is the card that you want. So this is really more of a long term card that's going to produce really great results. But the downside is that you've got to put a lot of money in to get um, a lot of money back out. Um, but, you know, if you are building a serious uh, mining rig, um, the R9 Nano is the card that you want to use. So um, generally speaking, um, this is going to be the best graphics card for Ethereum mining. However, there is um, significant um, initial investment so you need to consider that and whether you're going to get a return on it in the long run um, on the basis of 380 pounds um, I should think you will get a return but it is quite a significant outlay um, most likely you'll probably be able to use this card for one to two years um, get back a significant amount of your original investment and then you can probably sell the card off as a very powerful uh, gaming card even say two years time so that would probably the best be the best plan for the overall performance okay guys so just to finish and uh, round up this uh, video here it is actually getting a little bit late you might have noticed the actual changing colors um, in the actual uh, the small video sort of a preview as the as the day has gone on it's taken a little bit longer um, to get done than I expected um, so the cars themselves, there's uh, three cars that we've uh, discussed in this video. Um, they're all very good in their own uh, respects um, and each for different reasons. Um, the car that is the best uh, in terms of mining Ethereum is really the one that's going to be best for you. So it really depends on um, how much money you've got to spend on the graphics card, what kind of time frame you're hoping to get your return back, and um, and other different factors such as where is the item going to be located, how cheap is your um, electricity and um, other other factors like that. So with with this video and those kind of um, 
questions answered hopefully you can pick the card that's going to be right for you for your uh, exact specific situation so hopefully you found this video helpful um, if you have please um, you know uh, give it a like um, and also make sure you um, subscribe to the channel if you're not already done so um, I'll be posting videos like this on a sort of semi-regular basis uh, if you have any questions or comments you can leave those in the box below and I'll be sure to get back to to as many people as I can so till next one guys thanks for watching